Tree testing is a great UX technique many researchers use when working with information architecture. It is a quick and effective way to gather insights into users' mental models and how they navigate through content, helping refine the navigation structure. But have you ever wondered how to make your tree testing studies better? Hi, my name is Alex and welcome to UX Tweaks channel. Today we are talking about optimizing tree testing studies. We will share our top five tree testing best practices and discuss how they help you get better applicable test results. Let's dive right in. It might seem obvious, but to optimize tree testing, you need to employ a proper test group. First of all, an effective tree test calls for participants who actually represent your target users. So a great technique to use before recruiting people is to create user personas. They will help you identify typical demographics, behaviors, and traits that you should be looking for in your participants. Secondly, when gathering people for a tree testing session, make sure they are not too familiar with your product. Otherwise, they might solve the tasks only because they already learned the hard way where to look for things. Lastly, having a proper test group helps gather better quality feedback. If you want to have actionable insights into your information architecture, you need reliable, honest feedback. An easy way to secure that is to get a professional recruitment tool. For example, you can use UX Tweaks user panel to recruit dependable testers for tree testing studies. To run tree testing better, you need to avoid labels without content or links. Unnecessary details could overwhelm participants and hinder the quality of results. Sometimes, less is more. You should also avoid any labels that could give testers an easy way out. Try to exclude labels of filters, search bars, or chatbots from the test. Such navigation components are useful on a real website, but including them in the research won't help you evaluate the intuitiveness of the information architecture. The way you formulate your tree test instructions and name the labels is essential. A great practice is to avoid professional jargon as much as possible. Instead, use terms your typical user would understand and relate to. It will improve intuitiveness. Also, make sure you use straightforward, clear instructions during tree testing. Overly complicated language can cause confusion in testers, skewing the study results. After you've created your study, conduct a pilot test with it first. A pilot test is a small-scale preliminary study. It's used to validate the effectiveness of the test structure and task scenarios before conducting the full study. It also helps check for technical issues, optimize instructions, and validate the study length. Proper study length is crucial for tree testing, as longer tests are more likely to cause participant fatigue. On the other hand, Short ones might not provide enough research data. By running a pilot test, you can better plan the optimal time needed to complete your tree test. Most tree testing studies only focus on the quantitative aspects of the data. However, asking for qualitative feedback in a post-test survey can also bring valuable insights. If testers are confused or misled during some task, you should ask them for elaboration in a post-test survey. This would provide better details regarding the source of confusion. What is the naming of the labels? Were there unclear instructions? Did the information hierarchy not match their expectations? By getting answers to these questions, you can optimize both the study and your website's information architecture. So these were our top five best practices for tree testing. Make sure to follow them in your research and be sure to get valid, actionable results every time. And if you're looking for a tree testing tool, make sure to check out UX Tweak. The link will be in the description. With UX Tweak, you can swiftly set up tree tests and employ reliable participants to make the most out of your research. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more UX tips in the future. See you next time.